balance. Just saying the word is enough to start an argument in most MMO communities. This isn't balance, that isn't balance. The pursuit of balance has homogenized the classes and items and playstyles so much they've lost all individuality and the game world feels less diverse. Balance is a complex topic, so I'd like to share my thoughts on what sustainable, high quality balance might look like. And this topic might take several videos, so in this video, I'd like to look at balancing the potential minimum and maximum stats available to any class when playing solo and then when playing in a group, which will allow the casual players to enjoy the casual content and also keep challenging the hardcore players when they play the harder stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes. When you play an MMORPG, there are many things, many abilities that you have control of your avatar over. Movement, attacking, defending, and there'll be many stats and numerical values that are important to your avatar's progression. Your health, your attack power, your critical hit rate, your dodge rate, your rate of progression, the experience caps, the experience rewards, all these various numerical values that matter. And they may change based on your chosen class, your chosen race, your chosen starting location, or your worship deity in the game. Now balancing all of these various stats and systems I'm guessing has kept more than a few game designers up at night. They've been worried about exactly how to make it fair, how every class should interact with every other class, and how you don't want to make a runaway meta where it's only really feasible to play one class. So I would like to propose a discussion on balancing. Now balancing is a remarkably complicated subject across all of the MMO world and there's no way we can discuss every type of balancing so I'm going to hyper focus in each of these videos. Today I'd like to talk only about the balancing in relation to class statistics and the gameplay viability of each class in both solo play and when the class comes to make up a group. I would like to propose a very simple framework that can be used as a failsafe, a safety net for designing, and then get your opinion on whether you think this framework would produce a viable landscape to develop within. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel for more MMO stuff and ring the bell for all future notifications. A big thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Balance within the MMO design space is such a complex thing that to avoid this becoming a one hour video, I'm going to hyper focus on a few specific elements every time. Mainly, the argument to survive solo and then thrive when teamed up. This can get complex, but if you're watching my videos, I'm going to assume you've got relatively complete MMO gameplay knowledge, so let's start breaking it down right away. Every player in an MMO has control over their avatar, and the avatar will have values measuring all of their abilities, from basic to complex. For example, you could have movement speed, forwards, backwards, left, right, and jumping, dodging or immunity frames given in a roll or a parry, stamina, usually a resource used to increase movement speed by running, hit points, your hit point recharge rate both in and out of combat, armor or incoming damage reduction from both physical, magical, or elemental sources, mana or magical energy, and mana recharge rate both in and out of combat, any class-specific energy or resources used for special abilities like rage, melee attack speed, sometimes tied to the weapon you're using, melee attack damage modifiers, again sometimes tied to the weapon, innate magical abilities such as known spells or healing spells, attack accuracy, the chance to hit, your critical hit chance, and then your abilities or skills, usually gained on leveling up or advancing through quest lines or certain professions, things used in combat which then have a short cooldown until they can be used again, and the cooldown modifier so you can use them quicker. This list isn't even complete, these are just variables that are immediately apparent, there's more, but for now we've got enough to make a point. Now the way a lot of older MMOs were designed was you had the Holy Trinity, the tank, healer, DPS, tribrid. The tank had high defense but had low damage output and low healing, the healer would keep the tank alive with high healing but had low damage output and low defense themselves, and the damage dealers had high damage output but low defense and low healing. And you would use the tactics of having three specific battlefield roles filled to defeat any individual encounter. And a lot of players would use this system because it worked, and it's not a bad system. The great thing about this system was it allows you to hyper-focus on the one element of gameplay you enjoy the most. If you like doing damage, then be a damage dealer because you do not need to worry about your own health, everyone else's health, the battlefield position. If you like controlling the ebb and flow of battle, then a tank is a really, really good role. It keeps it simple. 
if you only have a few things to worry about. And the Holy Trinity was a great system to work from. It's a good foundation, but it does need some tweaking. Let's take the idea of the Glass Cannon Mage, a build designed specifically for maximum damage output and nothing else. And let's see how those scales might look on this class. Well, movement might be pretty low if you're standing still to cast spells. You won't be dodging much. Stamina won't matter because you're rooted. Your hit points will be irrelevant because your plan is to kill stuff before it kills you. In fact, most things will be low, extremely low, apart from your magical damage output, which is as high as it can possibly be. This was, and in some games still is, the design philosophy behind the Glass Cannon Mage, which makes it almost solo unplayable because any enemy will kill you if they hit you. What about the standard melee tank? Well, I imagine they might look like this. Low movement because they're standing in the fight, but high defense and high health, high damage reduction, low most everything else. And finally, how about a healer? Well, they're probably more balanced, but again, they're only really good at one thing, healing other players. So what's the issue with the design, and how would I change it? First off, it's vital to understand that the Holy Trinity exists for a reason. This setup is actually the result of the most efficient way for a team to organize. Even if you removed all of the battlefield roles and classes and made each player able to do anything just like RuneScape has, you will still find that some teams end up organizing into this structure. A player specifically designed to tank, a healer helping them survive, and then the damage dealers, because having this team composition is just one of the best ways to organize. Organize. So I don't want to remove this system entirely, because it's not broken. I just want to find a way to remove its weaknesses and enhance its strengths. And here's how I'd do it. I'd add three limits to those stat bars. A minimum survive limit, a maximum solo reachable limit, and then a maximum cooperative reachable limit. Allow me to explain. Using a system I'll refer to as survive to thrive, which means meeting a base minimum to allow for casual solo play, the survive limit, and then a maximum reachable by serious solo play, and a maximum attained only through cooperative. Remember these bars? Well, you'll notice that some of them are extremely low, while others were extremely high. This means if you played as a damage dealer, you would kill enemies quickly, but you'd also be killed quickly yourself. If you played as a tank class, you'd be unlikely to die at all, but killing anything will take an absolute age. And healers are always difficult to play solo, because they have both low health and low damage output. This balance is based around the idea of having a team. And games that use this design philosophy, EverQuest, Asheron's Call, Original Warcraft, were designed in such a way that players would team up for most of the encounters in the game. You would compensate for your extreme weaknesses in one area by bringing someone who was extremely strong in those areas. The strength of an MMO is in how it's played together, but with the player base pushing more and more towards solo play, changes do at least need to be considered. So here's my suggestion. I do not want to remove role specialization or the need for teamwork at harder encounters, but I do want to make casual solo play possible because the player base demands that it be possible. So we find the lowest level these bars need to be for solo play to be viable, but still challenging. The minimum health you'll need to take on the first mini boss alone, the minimum armor that you will require to take on a small mob, the minimum damage you need to put out to win within a sensible time frame for solo encounters, and we make this the minimum started at for every class. This might involve increasing the amount of health or armor the healer class has, or increasing the minimum damage the tank does. Tanks, healers, and DPS classes will now all reach a bare minimum. This is the solo survive line, because it's the minimum needed to survive alone. By raising the stats of each class to the survive line, you are guaranteeing that new players will be able to choose any class and do most of, but not all, of the early to mid-game content without needing to team up. Now, people sometimes push back when I say this to them about creating a base survive level. People say it's homogenizing all the classes. It is bringing everything together. It is removing class identity and replacing it with a wave of gray. But remember, I'm not saying you should allow every class to do everything. I'm not saying every class should be as good as every other class at everything else. You shouldn't be able to play a tank class that does as much damage as a damage dealing class. You shouldn't be able to play a damage dealing class that can heal as much as a healer. This is the base minimum for casual players to be able to log on, play for an hour or two, and log off without feeling that they absolutely need to find a team to progress. This is the bare minimum. So you're not spending half an hour to kill a mob if you're a tank. So you're not being too shot 
if you're a healer. This is the absolute minimum. Now we've got the survive level down, we can look at the two levels of thriving. With the minimum set, we can now look at two potential maximums. The ability to not only survive, but thrive. This is what the classes excel in, where they truly shine and what sets them apart. If we were to take the graphs again, the thrive line would be the theoretical maximum, with tanks having the most possible health, damage dealers doing the most damage, or healers healing the most over time. This is where the class battlefield roles remain important. The Trinity is still existing, but I want to make one major change to the gameplay of the Trinity. Remember the idea of the buff class, the class that enhances the others yet is not brilliant itself in any way? Well, I'd love to take that idea of enhancing others and share it among the three main roles, with each role being able to enhance the other two. Consider this. Here is the graph of a tank. We see the survive line is met. This class is solo viable. Someone will be able to casually play this and have fun and make progress in a realistic time frame. Now let's add in the solo thrive line, the maximum achievable through solo play you'll see it's higher and allows the tank to remain a tank. The class will still have more armor, more health, its role remains safe. But you'll note I've said solo thrive. This is the maximum achievable alone. My system for not removing the need for teamwork is this. Each part of the Trinity will be able to both passively and actively buff the other two. And only through those buffs will the cooperative thrive limit be met, which is higher than solo. This system means solo play is casually possible for all players, and seriously possible for people who want to push their class. But teamwork remains essential for taking on the game's hardest challenges. A damage dealing class may have a passive or active buff that actively increases a tank's defense, or a tank's dodge rate, or a healer's output healing. A tank class might increase a damage dealer's accuracy or critical hit rate. A healing class even being present might increase the tank's passive regeneration, or lower the cooldown times of their abilities. Each corner of the triangle is now enhancing and supporting the other two, and it's only through those enhancements that an individual player, and therefore a party, can reach their maximum potential. The great thing about this system is that the three limits you've placed, the minimum to survive, solo thrive, and then team thrive, are actually the most common three ways of playing an MMORPG and allow every player to focus on the level they want to get to. If you are a casual player who wants to log on, choose any class, it's your first time playing an MMO, and you just want to take on the challenge, then the minimum survive level will make sure that you can do that. If you're leveling a healer, you will still be able to kill mobs. If you're leveling a damage dealer, you will still be able to take a few hits without dying. But then when you get to the solo maximum, the solo thrive, that's when you get the hardcore players who don't want to interact still able to achieve a great deal. But because the strength of the MMO is in group play, and I don't want to take that away, I don't want to remove the identity of the genre, in order to reach your character's absolute pinnacle, the peak of what you could be, you will still need a team because you need the support and the buffs and the abilities from the other players, from the other parts of the Holy Trinity, in order to reach your maximum potential. Your team will only thrive to the best they can be if you support them, and you will only reach the best you can be if they support you. But this is the content at the extreme end game. This is the extremely difficult, challenging, mythic quality content. This is not the kind of thing a casual player will ever be able to get to, to be honest. This is the hard stuff that's challenging the really enfranchised players. This way, we're allowing casuals to experience something good without locking them to needing a team. We're allowing hardcore players to challenge themselves solo, and we're allowing the hardcore team-based players to feel rewarded for creating a team. MMOs need to be enjoyable and playable by solo players because the solo demographic is huge. So the minimum survival line exists for casual players to allow them to explore and enjoy casually and survive. 
while the solo thrive limit allows solo players to push themselves to take on harder content. The kind of content that would have taken an early game team can now be done by a single solo player. But MMOs also need to encourage teamwork at all levels, especially higher levels. The multiplayer element is important because it's a great strength of the genre. So the system of buffing the balanced and varied teams means all classes are important to a group. So harder content is more about working together and enhancing the people with you. Balance is a complex topic, and this certainly won't solve all our problems straight away, but I truly believe it would be a solid start. Raise all the classes to a minimum viable survive level, and then require teamwork to reach the theoretical maximum thrive level. Casual players get to enjoy most of the casual game without feeling held back, and team players get to support each other and reach the highest levels of power. This system would allow developers to balance classes around both what they are capable of doing solo and what they can bring to a team. With the buffing system helping everyone else, it would no longer be a case of this class does the most damage or this class is the best tank, it would now be this group composition is completely viable for the challenge you're taking on. But what do you think about balancing stats and classes within MMOs? What was the best or worst example of stat balancing you've ever seen? Let me know in the comments below. Once again, a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.